Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you into our webinar today. Today's webinar will be on foster care and student success guide chapters one through three. So I'm going to give a little time for everyone to come in. Let's get a little comfortable. Um, we're going to talk about the new foster care guide. We're so excited to bring these, this webinar series to you. Um, we want to ensure that you have a full understanding of the foster care and student success guide as you assist our students in foster care. So we're going to get started in just a minute. Good morning to everyone. We want to ensure you that this series will be very helpful for you as you continue to assist our students in foster care. So good morning to you all. So I want to talk about, I'll give you a quick introduction of myself. My name is Latrenda Watson. I'm the new at-risk state coordinator here at TEA in the highly mobile and at-risk student programs division. So I support foster care and student success. I also support pregnancy related services and I also support at-risk resources. So any of those informations that you may need, please feel free to reach out to me um, at the phone number and also the email. So if you have any questions along those realms of foster care, PRS, and any at-risk resources, please reach out to me. And I am so happy to be with you today. So before we get started, I want to ensure that you know where the guide is. So the Foster Care and Student Success Guide, the new book, we've been waiting for it. So here it is. So the new book is at the link below. So go right now to teatexas.gov backslash foster dash care dash guide. That will take you directly to the guide page. The guide has its own page. We're going to go through information within it. So I want to make sure you know where the guide is before we even get started, because I will be referencing the guide throughout this presentation. And I would like for you to look and follow along as I talk about the guide. So please go to the link that is on your page right now, TEA t.texas.gov backslash foster dash care dash guide. And if you happen to have printed it out, great for you. That means you can tap everything that I will be talking about today. So the foster care guide is a combination of great efforts put along by Texas Education Agency, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, and the Texas and the Supreme Court of Texas Children's Commission. So these three entities have made this book possible. With the great collaboration after two years, the book has finally come out. So all of the collaborators have done a great job in building a guide to provide excellent information to provide services for our students in foster care. So all three of these entities have provided information for you to make sure we are very successful in helping our students. So our objectives are to provide educators with all these working, all those working with students in foster care, a brief overview of the foster care and student success guide. We also want to familiarize educators with the foster care guide and relevant laws and policies that affect the educational experiences of students in foster care. We also want to provide you access to the foster care guide for purposes of ensuring students in foster care are provided the proper assistance. So this guide and these trainings are there for you to provide you with more guidance, more information that you may successfully help your students in foster care. So what our agenda is today, we will talk about the foster care overview. We will talk about the preface, the chapter one, chapter two and chapter three. And if we have time at the end, we will have questions. And then I will provide you more information about future trainings of the foster care guide. So we do have more trainings after this. We have a series. So we want to provide you with more information about that. So 
So in the chat, I thank you all for introducing yourselves. This is a great way for us to get started. So you can indicate your job title, your name, your district, and also, I would love to see what information is important for you when you are working with students in foster care. So what information is important for you when you are working with students in foster care? So I, it is great to see all of these school districts over the, all over the state of Texas as we come together and we collaborate. So this is a great way for us to collaborate, to see what we are doing to help our students what is working good for you. And you can get some ideas, especially going through the chat to figure out how can we successfully help our students. And this foster care guide is a great way to begin. And best practices, yes, best practices throughout the guide. We There are tips for you to use to find out what best practices are working for others. Um, when, when you send us information and when you give us questions, we do use those to formulate our FAQs to help everyone out. So just let us know what information is important for you when you are working with students in foster care. Making sure that all their needs are met emotionally and their implementation of 504. Yes, that is very valuable information. The previous school history. Yes, you should know what happened at the previous school so you may provide the, the services for those students. Great information in the chat. So any other, what is important for you when you are working Qualification details, yes, that is very important. Dissemination of the correct information regarding education and available resources. Resources are, are very important when working with students in foster care because you want to be able to provide them information of those resources that are out there that can help them and that can help those students. Yes, developing a working relationship with CPS, that is very valuable. They are there to help everyone and they are valuable help. So now let's continue on. Thank you all for contributing to the, the chat. So now I want to make sure you understand, I want to er encourage everyone to sign up for updates from TEA. On the TEA webpage at the top, there is a tab that says sign up for updates. We will send you information about upcoming trainings, new guidance, and great information to assist you in supporting students. So please ensure that you have signed up for updates. So once you sign up for the updates, you can pick in our special populations, we have the at-risk and highly mobile student program divisions. You can also sign up for foster care updates. You can sign up for McKinney Vento homeless education, mental and behavioral health, and military connected student updates. So that is our highly mobile and at-risk student program division. So please sign up for updates from all of those areas. So now before in our overview section, we talked about the icons in the guide. So I want to highlight the icons again to ensure that you understand the valuable information that we are providing for you. So the icons are located throughout the guide to assist you in finding information. So the table of contents and the chapters are grouped by colors. So the orange color chapters are about the preface, the appendices, and the references. So the green section is the overview. It will provide you an overview of that topic. And then the purple means cross systems and collaborations. It will talk about how you can collaborate with other systems and other personnel and other agencies. And then we have our blue section, which is district and LEA, local educational agency responsibilities. So we have those sections. So each chapter has a color 
And based upon the color that it's talking about, it will cover these topics, the table of contents. So then also within the book, we have the use of icons. So the icons are valuable for your understanding of the specific information that is provided in that chapter. So you have the tip icon, the green flag is your tip icon. Then you have the reminder icon, the collaboration icon, the note icon, the law icon that will specifically talk to you about the law. And then you can get the resources, the new items and our best practices. So this information is provided for you throughout and it will assist you when you are looking throughout the guide. And remember this actual slide is on page four. So at the bottom of the, each one of these slides, they tell you where the information actually ends within the guide. So yes, this these slides will be available on our webpage. We have, um, we have provided you the presentation and the recording will be on our webpage next week. So you may be able to go get this information freely and pass that information along for those who were unable to make it today. So for this, um, this icon guide, please check page four. So now let's talk about the table of contents. The table of contents is located on page five through eight. The table of contents shows the chapters and the subsections, and they are hyperlinked for you so that you are able to go directly to those pages. So if you're just looking to find certain information, you, all you have to do is just click on that subsection within the chapter. So within the electronic guide, so you can automatically, if you just want to go to how to use the guide, you can click on that hyperlink and it will take you directly to that page. So the table of contents is very valuable for you. All you have to do is click on the area which you want to go. So if you wanted to just go to chapter one, just click on that chapter and the table of contents is located on five through eight. So now I wanted to highlight this letter from an alumna of the Texas foster care system. It provides a firsthand experience for students and that are in need of guidance. And I quote, the hope is that professionals in all systems and communities realize that my story can become norm and everyone involved does their part to ensure the best interests of children and youth are not only talked about, but are importantly followed through on. So this is a student who went through this firsthand. So we wanted to provide you with information that shows why it is so important to ensure that our students are reaching those goals and we're working together to help our students. So this guide is here as guidance for you as you work to support those students in foster care. So now let's go in and start talking about the preference of the guide. So the preference starts on page nine of the guide, so nine and 10. In this section, the definition that is used for foster care is defined in foster care, is defined in this section that will be used as for the term throughout the guide. So defining a foster care is used to refer to children and youth who are in custody of the state of Texas due to abuse and or neglect, regardless of their living arrangements. That is the working definition that is used for foster care throughout this entire guide. So we wanted to provide that information up front. So please go through the rest of the definition using for understanding of how foster care is used throughout this guide. There is a a box on page nine that provides that definition information. The guide background speaks about all the collaboration efforts of the many professionals and agencies and systems working together to address the educational needs of students in foster care. So we wanted to provide you with background information of how all, all of us work together to ensure the success for our students. And then how to use the guide. It provides you a background on how the icons and table of contents that I previously discussed, and then also how the appendices contain charts, resources, and information, including the glossary, 
with relevant CPS and legal terms and acronyms to better provide understanding to, to, of the child welfare system and terms used throughout this guide. So those terms and that appendices is page 151. So you can go to that page to start learning about the glossary that contains all the definition of terms and any acronyms that you may not understand. All of those are labeled in the back of the book. Now, we want to provide you in this section, it says, where can I get more information about foster care? Where can I get more information about foster care at TEA? So TEA provides you a web page dedicated to guidance for students in foster care. You may also subscribe to our newsletter where you can provide, where we provide information, resources, and tools related to education and students in foster care. So you have, we have the foster care webpage that you can go to to find more information and resources. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and we just had a newsletter go out in March. So, and you can also go back and, visit and see that newsletter in our archive that is on our webpage. So you can review that. And then you can always, if you have any questions or in need of support addressing the educational needs of students, please email the foster care liaison at tea.texas.gov. So you have three avenues to get more information from TEA regarding students in foster care. So our webpage, our newsletter, and also you can email us for any educational needs or support at our TEA foster care liaison email. And this information is located on page 10 in the foster care guide. So now in this area, educators should know, things that educators should know. In our last um, foster care guide, this was only one page. We have expanded it to two pages. So there are two pages of information with things foster care, educators should know about foster care. We've chosen just a couple few to put on this slide here. Maintaining confidentiality and sensitivity is very important. We do not want our students' information out there, so please maintain confidentiality. Also, students in foster care want to participate in decision-making and engage in goal setting. So talk with your students in foster care, engage them, see what their long-term goals are and see how you can help them reach those goals. So it's good to have those conversations with the students. We also, trauma and adverse experiences may impact students' learning, behavior and socialization. Thank you for it. We are proud that we put our chapter in the book regarding trauma and informed and trauma informed training and it supports those students. So we want to make sure you understand that our students have trauma from experiences they go through. So we want to ensure that you understand that and are sensitive to that matter. And then also support and or and resources are available to help students transition out of foster care and pay for college. So we do have a post-secondary chapter within this guide so that this guide is well-rounded for you to understand and assist all students in foster care. And this information is located on page 11 and 12 in the foster care guide. So now let's head into chapter one. We're gonna focus on a couple of highlights in the chapter that we want to let you know about. So in chapter one, it speaks about the introduction, also the national overview, and then maintaining school stability, and then Texas foster care data. So it, this overview is located on chapter 13. So introduction, our students in foster care, our students in foster students in foster care in the state of Texas. So this information is located on page 14. We wanted to make sure you understood um, the different, how we have our different information, um, what we have for our students in foster care. And we wanted to show you students in foster care are, are highly mobile. They are just not in one place all of the time. So, and, 
with our students in foster care, we wanted to indicate that there are at least 17,000 school age students in Texas who are in foster care on any given day. 17,000 students. So that is a lot of our students. And we want to make sure that we provide them with the proper resources and supports that they need. Also, the National Working Group for Foster Care and Education, that they suggest that education is a critical component to positively impacting the lives of students who experience foster care. So we provide you with more information about our, the National Working Group on Foster Care Education. Maintaining school stability. So school stability is a necessary component to improving the educational experience and outcomes of students in foster care. We want to provide you with information about how we can work with our students, even though they do have school in instability sometimes, but we want to provide them stability when they come to our schools. Um, working collaboratively, we wanted to make sure you understood what ESSA means, the Every Student Succeed Act, and how it is incorporated with students in foster care and what requirements are, just because it is in there, what requirements does it have with students in foster care? So this information is on page 15. I wanted to highlight this for you, so please highlight it in your, your guide or highlight it on the page that you're working with, that this information you're working collaboratively with others. We are working collaboratively with others to ensure that we give all the resources to our students in foster care. So now also in chapter one, we talk about Texas foster care data. So in 2019, students from the ages of 14 to 17 made up approximately 17% of students in Texas children in the child welfare system. That's a lot of students. And we want to show you also that 1,212 young people aged out of foster care in 2019 and lived on average in six different places. So having that information and knowledge it gives you that sensitivity to work with those students who may come to your campus who are in foster care, who are experiencing foster care at that time. So it gives you a lot of knowledge to work with those students. Um, PEANS, also in 2013, Texas law required capturing students in foster care through the Public Education Information Management System, which is our PEAM system. So we started capturing students in PEAMS in 2013. In 2015, ESSA included foster care as a subpopulation for data collection and analysis to be performed by states and LEAs. So that's why we want to make sure we are properly identifying our students in foster care so they can properly get all the resources that they need. And this information is on page 17. So educational outcomes, along with ESSA, ESSA required us to report our graduation, graduation rates for our students in foster care and also the dropout rates for our students in foster care. So this information is highly important at the local level because we are capturing your information that you are placing in PEANS and we're capture, capturing it on a state level and reporting it on a national level. So please ensure that you are properly identifying your students. So in 2019, foster care graduation rates dropped from 63.4% to 62.6%. And this information is in the foster care guide in 2018. And it provides you with where the information, where we receive this information from, and it is in the appendices. So the state graduation rate held steady at 90%. So while the state held at 90%, our students experience foster care, it dropped from 63 to 62%. So we want to ensure that we are making sure our students are graduating. When they come to us, we want to ensure that they have all the proper resources to graduate. Our dropout rates in 2019, we had 25% of our students in foster care drop out of school. But one out of every four students in foster care drop out compared to 5.9% of the state. We want to decrease these dropout rates. So in order to do that, we have this foster care guide to help all of our school districts to ensure that you have all what you need to provide proper guidance to our students. And this information is located on page 18. 
So child welfare and disproportionality. So this information is very important. It provides demographic information. It provides you with information to understand what these terms are because these terms are looked at nationally. So we want you to understand why we may ask some questions sometimes and obtain certain information. So disproportionality is a term used to describe over and under representation of a particular group in comparison to their percentage in the general population. So children of color are overrepresented in the child welfare system, but there is research available to increase understanding of the theories regarding the dis disproportionate representation of children of color in foster care, including parent and family risk factors, community factors and organization and systematic factors. So we want to ensure that you understand what information is looked at. We go in detail on page 20. We provide you charts, information and um, data to, for, to understand child welfare and disproportionality. So graduation rates, what I spoke about before. So we wanted to provide you with this graphic so you can understand our graduation rate rates and our dropout rates as compared to the state of Texas and also compared to our highly mobile at risk um, student population. So foster care dropout, homeless dropout, migrant at risk, and then we also provide military connected dropout information. So these are our highly mobile areas, and we wanted to provide an overall picture of what the information is. And this is on page 19. Now let's talk about demographics of our Texas students in foster care. This information is on page 20. So what we found as, as children and youth are overrepresented racial groups in foster care. So 40% of Hispanic children are removed from their homes. And remember we talked about earlier what the definition of foster care was. And this, is, this goes into understanding our, our demographics within Texas schools. Then we have 32% of Caucasian children and youth are removed from their homes. And then we have the 21% of African-American students are removed from their home. Resources about disproportionality and child welfare are on page 20. So this is very important information to have. And this graphic shows you the students in foster care and based upon the total population of students within the state of Texas. So also in chapter one, and we wanted to provide you with resources. We don't, we never want to provide you with all of this information and not provide you with the resources. So all of these will be hyperlinked and this will be available for you on our webpage, the Texas, Agent, Texas Education Agency Foster and Student Success webpage. We also highlighted for you the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We also wanted to let you know our one of our other partners, the Supreme Court of Texas Permanent Judicial Commission for Children, Youth and Families, Foster Care and Education. Then we wanted to provide you with the overall, the US Department of Education Foster Care. So they have an actual web page for you to provide information also. And then the data that we have, we have the data report from DFPS and the Children's Commission and TEA that was put together for Texas information. So that data is together in one report and we wanted to provide you access to that also. So that all the resources for this next section is on page 21. So now let's pause, let's pause for a minute. I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, let's pause for a minute. What information is new to you from this guide so far? Um, and even if you have taken a look through the guide and just say, oh, this is new to me. So what information is new to you from this guide? Please share within the chat. Yes, statistics are very important to understanding what is going on with our students. Graduation rates for different groups, yes. We do provide more detailed information for you for that.
yes, teacher information. We wanted to provide more options for to understand teachers because there's a lot educators may not understand or even just may not think about. So we wanted to provide more options for that. I thank you for that. All information is helpful information. Yes. So how would you share this information within your LEA? And if you're at ESC, how would you share this information with your, your different districts that you represent? Because this is valuable information. Yes, trainings are highly valuable. That's why we at TEA, we want to provide you with guidance. We have these recordings. We have these PowerPoints. So we want to get this information out there. So you always can go back and refer to our trainings and our PowerPoints that will be on our webpage. Yes, conversation, start the conversation. Professional development is highly useful. And also, if when we post our newsletters, please share those newsletters. And, and you providing monthly newsletters with resources of information that we provided you, that is very effective. Yes, I see meet with counselors and campus administrators regarding specific students. Yes, providing information. Yes, counselors should know about this information. This is highly um, sensitive information. Everyone in the school building who, worked, who works with students in foster care should know this information. And we thank you so much for coming to our trainings so we can get the word out and provide an understanding of our students in foster care. So raising awareness, that is the key word, raising awareness. So let's go in and start looking at chapter two. So chapter two. In chapter two, we have the Texas commits to improving educational outcomes of students in, in care. Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We also have information about the court system and we have the educational system and the workforce system. So in this information, in chapter two, we talk about cross systems awareness. So remember those icons at the top, this is this is purple, so we need to make sure we understand all of what we are trying to gain. And then chapter two starts on page 22. So how does Texas commit to improving the educational outcomes for students in care? So in 2010, the Supreme Court of Texas issued an order establishing the Educational Committee of the Permanent Judicial Commission for Children, Youth, and Families, the the Children's Commission, which is one of our partners that help us with this guide. The Texas Blueprint is a task force that were created in 2012 with the Children's Commission, DFPS, and TEA for recommendations and monitoring implementations. So the Texas Blueprint, it provided over 100 recommendations to the task force in providing resources for our students in foster care. So all of these entities work together to provide various recommendations. And more information about that is on page 23. So now we wanted to show you resources and how you can collaborative work together and collaborative reports that have been done that will support your work in, in, in assisting students in foster care. So you have the foster care college and tuition fee waiver process. This is a flow chart that shows you the actual process as you guide your students to filling out and getting ready for the process for the, the tuition and fee waiver. It shows you what all happens throughout the process, where you should go, how you should start. And this is valuable information for our juniors and seniors at, in the high school level who are getting ready for preparing for college and post-secondary. Then we also provide you information with information sharing between child welfare and the schools, how that information process works. And then regional CPS educational consortas. 
those are very valuable to learning and building your knowledge on students in foster care. So those ESCs have a foster care champion. We, we love our foster care champions at our ESCs and they assist with our educational specialists with CPS to put on those foster care educational consortiums. So please, um, if you have not, please make sure you check with your ESC who your foster care um, champion is. Also, Texas CASA, if you want to know more information about Texas CASA, we have that link for you. Texas Higher Education and Foster Care Liaisons. Our higher education, we want to ensure those students are not just dropped off at the college campus, but we have foster care liaisons on the higher education level that will support our students also. And then a statewide sur survey on local collaboration. How can you collaborate locally? We have a one pager that will assist you in that. And this information is located on page 24 in chapter two. So now let's talk about Texas Department of Families and Protective Services in this area. In this chapter, we go into specifics more about DFPS. So the staff is responsible for providing services to children and families in their own homes, placing children in foster care, providing services to help youth in foster care and make the transition to a successful adulthood and placing children in adoptive homes. So which, which each of the FPS regions, there are a number of services and opportunities to support students in foster care. So we want to ensure that we know what the DFPS staff is responsible for. So we know how to um, work cooperatively with them and collaboratively. And this information is on page 24. Next, we talk about our education system. So um, we have SEA, we have LEA, and we have ESC. So here are those acronyms. So we want to make sure everyone understands what these acronyms mean. So SEA, the State Education Agency. So within the state of Texas, we have the Texas Education Agency is the state agency responsible for administering federal and state education laws and policies. Now, also you have your LEA, your L local education agency that are our school districts. So we have, Texas has more than 1200 local education agencies operating more than 8,800 public schools, including the charter schools. And then we have our ESC. So the support, our education service centers, they support services and technical assistance they provide to LEAs to, to enable LEAs to operate more efficiently, implementing legislative and commissioner initiatives and assisting in improving student performance. So these are very important acronyms to us. So you have your SEA, your LEA, and your ESCs. And this information is located on page 25 and 26 in the guide. So now we wanna talk about our institutions of higher education. As I spoke about before, our higher education, um, institutions of higher education are any public technical institute, a public junior college, a public senior college or university, a medical or dental unit, a public state college or other agency higher education. So when we talk about higher education, all of these entities include that your post-secondary. So with that, our higher education coordinating board designated a foster care liaison to support and assist students in foster care. The name and contact of the foster care liaison must be named public, it made public. So all of our counselors or our high school personnel who work with students who are looking at post-secondary, the Texas higher education um, colleges have foster care liaisons. And that information is also located in our guide to where you have their information and their contact information to reach out to them. So we want to ensure that we provide that transition for our students to post-secondary. That is very ease, at ease. So this is on page 26 and 27 in the guide. So also we have a new section within the guide. So we have the higher education, we have the Texas Workforce Solutions. 
Texas Workforce Solutions is a local and statewide network comprised of 28 workforce development boards and their contracted service providers and community partners. So they also provide an actual website for information for building our youth in foster care. So eligible youth in foster care may receive priority over other equally qualified individuals except eligible vet veterans in the receipt of federal and state funded Texas Workforce Solutions Services. So they provide services. So please reach out and understand what those services are. So all of this information is on page 27. So we wanted to make sure you knew this information about Texas Workforce Solutions to assist our students. And more in-depth information is on page 27. So now DFPS and our ESC region. So DFPS, has their own regions. So make sure you understand we do not, they do not function on the same regions as our ESC regions. That's why we wanted to make sure we showed you the, the map of Texas. So our DFPS regions and then our ESC regions. So in the ESC regions, we have over 20, we have 20 regions. So make sure hopefully everyone on here knows who their ESC region is. So remember at the bottom, we provide green flags and those green flags are tips. We want to make sure you understand those tips for understanding the information that is provided for you. So the, um, the tip on this page is on page 28. So it explains more about our DFPS and our ESC regions. So now let's take another little break just to take a breath for a moment right quick. So we want to, I want you to utilize the guide, utilize the guide, not just depend on everything that I'm saying. Um, everything I'm giving you is straight from the guide, but I want you to actually look through the guide, get comfortable with the guide. And that's what these trainings are, are intending to do. So I want you to let us know where information is within the guide. So number one, things educators should know about students in the foster care guide. Do anyone know what page is that on? What page is things educators should know about students in foster care? Does anyone know? So I'm, I'm seeing the answers come through the chat. Very good. It is good to know where this information is. I can talk all day, but I want you to actually go through and actually find the information. So yes, 11, it, it's in the preface, page 11 and 12, things educators should know. And this is very important information. If you're giving professional development, it is great to start with that information. So that is a good start. Number two, the 2018-2019 STAR results for students in foster care. Remember, we are trying to understand and keep that information for our students. That information would help us assist our students in foster care, making sure we provide them with the, the proper resources that they need to be successful in school. So you need to know what those STAR results are. So yes, number two, page 18 has the actual star results for our students in foster care. So I highly suggest that you pull those informations in your LEA, understand your students in foster care, build that knowledge base. And then number three, your ESC foster care champion information. Where can you find that ESC foster care champion information? Make sure you know who your ESC foster care is champion is we love working with our esc foster care champions so keep looking keep looking what page number is are we talking about our esc foster care champions because they're referenced throughout the book but where do we begin talking about them our esc foster care champions and what do they do? So every all that information is in the guide. On page 26, we start talking about our ESC foster care champions on page 26. So how hopefully this activity helps you go through the guide, helps build your understanding of the guide, helps you know how to look through the guide. So our trainings are built up on the premise of understanding the guide. 
Thank you all for participating in the chat. Now let's head into chapter three, chapter three. So in chapter three, we talk about building those cross system partnerships. Remember that purple is building those collaborations. So now we're talking about building partnerships in education, child welfare, and the courts. So this chapter three talks about cross system collaboration, how it is necessary, the guiding principles and the ground rules, the practical steps for establishing collaboration and local partnerships, and then collaboration in action. So this is something that is highly suggested when working, with, working for our students in foster care to building those collaboration efforts. So cross-system collaboration. So anytime you see those hands shaking, that means we are talking about collaboration. So the child welfare system, education agencies, and legal system stakeholders, they must work together to remove barriers, strengthen partnerships, and work in new and different ways to institute shared practices that promote the educational success of students in foster care. So working collaboratively and starting to work collaboratively, this information is provided for you on page 30. So then we go into building the guiding principles and ground rules. The guiding principles, they may be adopted locally and regionally to establish a shared vision for working with students in foster care. We want to make sure we share that vision in the guide. We provide you with eight guiding principles in order to start building that relationship. So these principles are working towards understanding we want to be on the same page. So for you to build that, that collaborative relationship with another, you need to be on the same page. And these are some guiding principles that were started so everyone can understand why we are here and why we are meeting. So these guiding principles and ground rules start on page 30 and 31. Please use these as you build your local collaboration efforts. Also, the guiding principles. The guiding principles are important components for successful and collaborative work for establishing partnerships. We want you to establish those local partnerships, especially with your DFPS educational specialists, with any personnel who work with our students in foster care, build those relationships. And we gave you guiding principles. And here are some ground rules for that understanding, providing that understanding of why we are working together and what do we need to do? We need to make sure collaborating, collaboration requires people with systems to work in new ways. If find new ways to make sure we are supporting our students in foster care, maybe take a look at the old ways and, and they may not have worked sometimes, especially coming to these types of trainings and we encourage you to, to type in the chat. I know earlier we saw someone said they use newsletters and now someone's gonna say, oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna start building newsletters. So now this is a great way that we are collaborating statewide to build more resources and awareness for our students in foster care. And like the last one said, communication is key to developing collaboration and continuing it in the future. So once you start it and you build it, please continue it. And this information on page 30 and 31. Now, steps for co establishing collaboration and partnerships. Now, remember in your book, you see that green flag on pages 32 and 33, we provide you green flags of tips. We want you to provide, we wanted to provide you with actual tips to working. We explain the definitions, acronyms and processes and responsibilities. Those are explained. That is a valuable tip. The topics that you can discuss when you start collaborating, those are important. And bringing people together. How can you, what are some tips to bringing people together? We actually provide you with that information. And then organizations. What organizations could you work collaboratively with? We provided you that information too. We provide you tips with working for all of these to build your collaboration efforts locally and regionally. And this information is on page 32 and 33. So highlight those tips.
Now, collaboration in action, page 33. So we talked about educational specialists from DFPS. They partner with your foster care liaisons from your districts, your LEAs, and the foster care champions at your ESCs to coordinate and, co and fo facilitate foster care consortiums to identify and eliminate barriers, provide cross-system training, and share meaningful resources to improve educational outcome for students in foster care. So remember, those when those hands are shaken, we are collaboratively working with each other. So you have your DFPS educational specialists, you have your foster care liaisons, you have your ESC foster care champions. All of those systems work together to make sure we improve the educational outcomes of our students in foster care. And then some topics for the consortas. If you have not already attended one, please make sure you catch the next one. Your foster care consortas, you, they, they talk about foster care matters. They talk about ESSA in more detail. They talk about transportation, graduation concerns, student identification, tuition and fee waivers, and roles and responsibilities of the school and DFPS personnel. So all of this information is valuable and understandable if you go to those foster care consortiums, because I have attended some and presented at some consortiums myself. So I know that you are there are some great ones out there. So check your ESCs and your DFPS educational specialists. Those are valuable meetings. And we talk more about this on page 33. So some resources. So remember, at the end of each chapter, we want to provide you with the actual resources where you can go and get this information and get more information. So regional DFPS educational consortiums, we provide you information there. When working together works, we provided you more information about how you can work with others. And then improving educational continuity and school stability for children in out of home care. So that is also a website in order how to work if you want more resources or more um, items of how you can work with our students in foster care who are experiencing foster care at the time. This, these are great resources to where you can build your toolbox to working with students in foster care. And this is on page 34. So now we went through chapters one through three. Those were valuable informations in chapters one through three that we wanted to highlight for you. So now based upon all of this information so far, and I provided you with a lot so far, and we just did one through three, what would you like to see in future foster care guide chapter trainings? So we are building these chapter trainings, but we want to make sure we have your feelings in mind on your thoughts. Why are you coming here? You want to get the information, but please let us know what information you would like to receive, how you would like to receive it. We want to cater to your learning. So this is information, how we can provide for you. Yes, scenarios would be a good one. So yes, we will incorporate more scenarios. So working with the foster care guide, and then we want to be working collaboratively with others. And this would be excellent information for you. So we do have foster care meetings. We, I, um, I actually meet with our foster care champions to provide them with information and that leads them to have their meetings with you. So please reach out to those foster care champions. These, these are great information. Thank you. Please fill in the, the chat. What information would you like to see in future foster care guide trainings? And remember, it's just not going to be the guide trainings. We will offer other webinars and other meetings for you to attend. So we may be providing you more detailed information about learning about the foster care guide. And coming to these webinars will start your training and get, getting that information and gaining that information. And remember, the chat is also a helpful tool for others who are trying to build their knowledge of foster care also. So thank you all for being here today. And keep including it in the chat. Keep, in, keep putting your ideas in the chat.
Yes, we will always provide the, the trainings and I, 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 I love your ideas. And please, uh, we want to involve you as much as possible. So your ideas that you're putting in a chat, we will be implementing those. And don't forget all the trainings are recorded and they will be placed on our website and also the, the slide decks, they will be on the website also. So now upcoming trainings, we wanna let you know about more trainings that we're having for the foster care guide. So the next training will be April 22nd, um, 2022 from 10 to 1130. We will be talking about chapters four and five. So we will focus on information in chapters four and five on April 22nd. And then we do have the link for registration, the website at the bottom of the page, please go to that website to register. So now we're having to add a new date. We're adding a new date for just chapter six. There is so much information in chapter six, it needed its own training. So we're going to provide that training on May 19th, 2022 at 10 a.m. So these are our upcoming trainings. Please go to our webpage to fill out the information for those trainings and register, register, register. And then also, if you're able to make it to the trainings, we do record and we do place them on our website. So if you have further questions, please email them to the foster care liaison at tea.texas.gov. So if you have any questions regarding any educational or any matters regarding um, things that are happening on your campuses, please put that information into the please email us please email us foster care liaison at tea.texas.gov and remember this information is in the foster care guide so we want to also to fill out this survey for us please provide us feedback on these trainings we want to we never want to come and give you a training and not hear your voice so we want to hear what what you may need and what's going on with you so please fill out this survey to provide us feedback it help us with direction that we're taking with providing these trainings um, it help us with information that you may be and it will direct our trainings and how we and information that we provide to you. So please provide us with the survey. We want to thank you all for coming to today and attending the trainings. I want to make them make them concise as much as possible because I know you're busy, but this information is so valuable for you. So um, thank you for coming today. Please fill out our survey. And anything that you may need, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact me, foster care liaison at tea.texas.gov. Um, I, I do respond. So please make sure you email us if you have any questions or concerns. And thank you today for attending our training on, ch on chapters one through three for the foster care guide. So thank you all. <laughs>